Hello everyone and welcome to this comprehensive Power BI tutorial focused on the powerful DAX language. Today, we will use real-life retail data to show how DAX can transform raw data into actionable business insight. Let's get started. Our case study is a retail chain. We have data sets including sales, customer demographics, and inventory levels. We will use DAX to analyze sales performance, identify buying trends, and evaluate inventory efficiency. Let's dive right into how we import and prepare our data for deeper analysis. If you're new here or need a refresher on navigating Power BI's interface, I cover this in detail in my Power BI for Beginners video. If you haven't watched it yet, I highly recommend checking it out first. The link is above. So directly go to Get Data, choose Excel Workbook, and connect to your file. Remember, we are using the data set that includes our sales, customers, products, and inventory data. Power BI will show you a preview of all the sheets and the data tables inside your Excel file. Check the boxes next to the ones you want to load. For our case, you will load products, customers, sales, and inventory. In the data view, examine each column in your tables. Look for consistency in category and naming. For instance, make sure electronics isn't misspelled in any entries. Check for missing values that could impact your analysis, such as missing product prices or customer contact information. Fill these gaps appropriately, either by imputing values manually or calculating an average for numerical data. So scan for any data that doesn't make sense, like negative numbers in inventory levels or incorrect dates in sales data. With our data now neatly imported and tidied up, we are set to move on to the exciting parts. Analyzing this data using Power BI DAX formulas to extract meaningful insights. Creating relationships between different tables is crucial for comprehensive analysis in Power BI. It allows us to connect data that spread across multiple tables so we can analyze it together. Let's go through the steps. First, identify the common keys that exist between your tables. These are fields that both tables share and can be used to link them. For instance, product ID is likely present in both sales and product table. So, right here in Power BI, go to the model view by clicking on the model icon on the left sidebar. This shows all your tables and the relationships between them. Power BI is smart at streamlining our data management processes, including how it handles relationships between different data sets. When you load your data into Power BI, the system automatically scans for common keys between these tables and often establishes relationships on its own. For example, your sales and products table both contain the product ID field. Power BI recognized this common field and automatically linked these tables using that field. This automatic feature is incredibly helpful as it saves time and reduces errors in linking tables. However, it's important to reveal these relationships to ensure they align with your data analysis needs. Despite its capabilities, Power BI might not always set up every needed relationship, particularly if the relationship criteria are not straightforward. For instance, the customer's table didn't automatically connect with the sales table because the direct relationship criteria might not be as obvious to Power BI's detection logic. To manage and review these relationships, click on Manage Relationships in the menu. Since Power BI did not automatically link the sales and customers tables, we need to manually create this relationship. So click New to open the Relationship Setup dialog. Select the Sales table as the first table and the Customers table as the second table. The Customer ID field has been selected on both tables automatically by Power BI. These are the fields that will link customers' details 
to their respective sales transactions. Set the cardinality to many to one with the cross filter direction set to single. This setup is typically for retail data where each customer may have multiple transactions. Confirm these settings and then click OK to create the relationship. After setting up the relationship, Power BI will validate it. Assuming no errors, the relationship is now active and will be used in your report. If you're finding this tutorial helpful so far, please consider clicking the like button and subscribing for more detailed guides like this. Your support helps me create more content. Going back to the table view, now let's start with basic Power BI DAX measures to understand overall sales and transaction values. We would start with total sales. Creating a measure for total sales is a fundamental step in analyzing business performance in Power BI. Let's go through how to set this up using DAX. We're going to be using the SUM function. What does it do? The SUM function in DAX is used to add up all the numbers in a column of your data table. It is one of the most basic yet essential functions in data analysis. Why do we use it? For total sales, we need to know the aggregate revenue from all transactions. The SUM function allows us to quickly calculate this total by adding up all the sales amounts recorded in each transaction. First, make sure you are in the data of the report view in Power BI. Then go to the modeling tab and click on new measure. This opens up the formula bar where you can type your Power BI DAX expression. We're going to be using this formula. Here's what each part means. This is the name of the measure you're creating. You can refer to this measure by this name in your reports and visualizations. And this tells DAX to sum up all the entries in the amount column of the sales table. So we're going to run this or commit it by clicking on this check mark. To validate your results, we're going to drag the total sales into a card visual to see if the number makes sense. Compare it with your raw data or previous reports if necessary to ensure accuracy. Next, we will create a measure to find the average sales amount per transaction. This helps to understand the typical spending per purchase, which is key for analyzing customer behavior and pricing strategies. Let's go through the steps. What does the average function do? The average function calculates the mean of all the numbers in a specific column. It sums up all the values and divides by the number of values. Why is it used? In our own case, we want to know the average transaction value from the sales data. Going back to the modeling tab, click again on new measure and enter this formula. Again, this is the name of your new measure. The new measure will appear under this name in your field list. This command calculates the average of the entries in the amounts column of the sales table. So let's commit this to have the measure created. Now we have the average sale measure listed here and it's available for your use. You can have this measure dragged into any visual on your report. For example, let's use a card again to have it displayed directly. We are now going to explore advanced Power BI DAX formulas. Let's look at how to calculate a running total. This measure will help us track how sales accumulate over a specific period, such as days, months, or even years. Here is how to set it up. We're going to be using the calculate and the filter functions. What do they do? The calculate function modifies the context in which a data expression is evaluated. It's one of the most powerful functions in DAX and can change the way that an expression is calculated. The filter function is used within the calculate function to apply filters to the data being calculated. Why do we use them? For the running total, Calculate allows us to sum up sales up to a certain date. And the filter function restricts the data to dates that are on or before the current date in context. This combination effectively builds a cumulative total. Before writing a formula, let's ensure we have a date table. If your module does not have one, create a new date table by navigating to the modeling tab, selecting new table, and using this DAX formula. So let's commit this to have it set as a date table in our model. 
We also need to ensure that there's a relationship between the date table and the sales table, specifically linking the date columns. With our date table ready and connected with sales, we're going to go back to the report view and click on the modeling tab in Power BI to select new measure. This is the formula we are going to use for the running total. Let's break this down. The running total, this is the name of your measure. This calculates the total sales and this ensures that the calculation includes all selected dates up to the maximum date in the current filter context. Let's commit that to have it added to our data field. So as you can see on the right, we have a running total listed as a separate field here. As we advance in our use of DAX, we will now build a measure to calculate the month over month sales growth. This helps us understand how sales are progressing from one month to the next and identify any trends or irregular patterns. Let's break down how to do this. We're going to be using the divide and calculate functions. What do they do? Divide function safely divides two numbers and undoes division by zero, returning an alternative result instead of an error. While the calculate function changes the context in which a data expression is evaluated, and it's useful for performing calculations over different time frames. Why do we use them? Divide is used to calculate the percentage growth rate by dividing the difference in sales between this month and last month by last month sales. And the calculate function is used to compute sales from the current month and the previous month respectively. So let's go ahead and write the formula in the formula bar. Again, to get that new measure, you're going to click on new measure in Power BI and have your code pasted here. This is the name of your new measure, sales growth. That's what you're going to see appearing on the right here. So this whole formula calculates the difference between this month's total sales and last month's, then divides that difference by last month's total sales to get the growth percentage. So I will commit that and as expected, that was successful. We now have a calculated sales growth listed as a measure on the data field here. This measure can be particularly impactful when displayed on a line chart. But given our data set's current limitation, we only have a single month of data. To illustrate how the month over month growth calculation will work in real scenario, we would need to manually add a synthetic data for the previous month. To do that, go to the Home tab in the Power BI desktop and click on Transform Data to open the Power Query Editor. This is where we can edit and enhance our data model. In the Power Query, find your sales table. Right-click the table and select Reference to create a new query that references the original sales data. We will use this to simulate our previous month's data. In the new query editor, Sales 2, let's reduce the sales amount by a certain percentage to simulate a realistic scenario for the previous month. You can do this by adding a new column with adjusted sales figures. So go to the Add Column tab and add a custom column. We will give this a name Sales Previous Month and use a formula like this this is the current amount we have on our table. I have that multiplied by 0.9 to represent a 10% decrease from the current month. Click OK. And now we have the new column representing our previous month's figures. Next, we need to adjust the date to the previous month. You can do this by adding another custom column that subtracts one month from the current date. use the formula to shift all dates in this new query back to one month. So as you can see, we have a new column representing the previous month's date and it's one month less than the current month. Once we have our simulated data for the previous month ready, 
The next step is to merge this data with our original sales data. This process will allow us to analyze trends across two months. Let's go through the steps to combine these queries in Power Query. Ensure you're still in the Power Query editor. If you've closed it, you can reopen it by going to the Home tab in the Power BI desktop and clicking on Transform Data. So in the Power Query editor, you can see both the original sales data and the new query that contains the adjusted data for the previous month. The original data is simply named sales and the new one could be something like sales previous month. To combine these two data sets, click on the original sales query in the Queries pane on the left side of the Power Query editor and select the drop-down of the append queries from the context menu. You have the option to append as new or current. Choose new to create a combined query for both. We already have sales selected for the first table, so you want to select your sales previous month for the second table. Click OK. And now we have a combined query for both our sales and our sales previous month. We can have the query renamed to current previous month sales. After appending, it's important to verify that all columns align correctly in terms of data type and name. Once you're satisfied that the data is correctly appended and aligned, Click Close and Apply in the upper left corner of the Power Query editor. This action commits your changes and loads the combined datasets into Power BI. Now, with our updated dataset that now includes both current and previous month data, we need to ensure that a relationship has been automatically created between the new table and the other tables so it can be effectively used for visuals. Power BI seems to have done the job for us, so we are good. Given the introduction of a newly created table that consolidates current and previous month's dates, the sales growth measure will need to be adjusted to accurately reflect and utilize this new data structure. So this is the code we used earlier. We're going to have that replaced with this code. So let's commit that. To make the measure impactful, I will use the line charts to display how it works. So drag your sales growth measure into the line charts together with months from your date hierarchy. Where each point represents a month and the line shows the growth rate trend over time. It can also be used in a KPI indicator to quickly show if sales are growing or declining month over month. Best practice, make sure your date column is correctly formatted as a date and set as a date table in Power BI. This ensures your time intelligence functions operate correctly. Understanding customer retention is crucial for any business. Let's build a measure to calculate the customer retention rate, which shows the percentage of last month's customers who made purchases again this month. To get the code for that, click on new measure and paste in the code. Breaking down this formula, this measure helps us track how many customers from last month are still with us this month. We start by identifying our previous month's customer using the calculatable function combined with date hard, which adjusts our data to look one month back. This gives us a list of all customers active in the previous month. Next, we gather a list of this month's active customer using the values function, which provides all unique customers IDs currently engaged. With both lists prepared, we use the intersect function to find common customers who were active both last month and this month. This intersection represents our returning customers. Finally, the retention rate is calculated by dividing the number of intersecting customers by the number of last month's customers using the divide function. If there were no customers last month, this formula returns a blank to avoid any division errors. So let's commit that. And on the right here, we have our retention rate measure created. To visualize your data, you might consider a line chart to see how retention rates change over time. Or a bar chart to compare retention rates across different customer segments. Next, 
we will calculate how much each product category contributes to total sales, giving us insights into which categories are performing well. We are again going to be using the calculate function, which allows you to modify how a measure calculation is considered by applying filters. It is extremely powerful for segmenting data. So again, navigate to the modeling tab and select new measure. Here is the formula we are going to use. This part of the formula removes any filters that might be applied to the product table, allowing us to consider all products when calculating total sales. The formula then divides the total sales of each category by the overall total sales to find the percentage contribution of each category. So commit that to have the measure created. If you notice on the right here, it's already been listed. Use this measure in a pie or bar chart to visually compare how much each category contributes to total sales. It's effective in product performance analysis and strategic planning. Inventory turnover is a crucial matrix for any business that holds stock. It tells us how often the inventory is sold and replenished over a given period. Let's set up this measure to gauge the efficiency of inventory management. The formula to use for that is this. This refers to the measure we previously created, representing the total revenue generated from sales. While this calculates the average level of inventory during the period. So commit that and drag this measure into a visual card to display a single number that represents the inventory turnover. You can also use it in a trend analysis over time by plotting it on a line chart to see how the turnover changes. Best practice, make sure that the data in your inventory table is up to date and accurately reflects the inventory levels at regular intervals. Inaccuracies here could skew the turnover rate. Lastly, we will focus on how to analyze sales performance during specific seasons using DAX. We will start with the winter months, December, January, and February. Understanding seasonal trends helps in planning inventory and marketing strategies more effectively. So let's click on the modeling tab to get the formula for that. Breaking this down. This is the measure we created earlier to represent total sales revenue. The calculate function is a powerful function in DAX that changes the context of the calculation by applying the specified filters. In this formula, calculate is used to reevaluate the total sales measure under a new context that is defined by the filter expression that follows. The filter is a function used to apply specific conditions to data, returning a table that only includes rows that meet the conditions. So it's used to create a subset of data from the date table, where the date falls within the winter months. The whole function removes any existing filters on the date table. This is crucial for ensuring that the filter applied in the calculate function has full control over the date context without being influenced by any other existing filters on the report or page. So it ensures that the filtering for winter months is applied across all possible dates in the data, not just within the currently filtered context. And this expression is used to identify the winter months. This extracts the month number from each date in a date table. It specifies the condition for the filter function where only the records from December, which is 12, January, that is 1, and February 2 are included. So this logical test checks if the month of each date falls into one of these three categories. So let's commit that. How do you use this measure in visuals? You can drag the seasonal sales into a line chart and configure the axis with the date or month field. You need to ensure the visual or page filters align with the intents of the measure, focusing only on the relevant winter months or other specific criteria you may have. Best practice, best practice, ensure your data includes a month field that is correctly formatted and categorized. This precision is crucial for accurate seasonal segmentation. 
Thank you for joining me in this comprehensive exploration of DAX in Power BI. If you've learned something new today, please like the video, subscribe to the channel for more tutorials, and share this with anyone who might benefit. Remember to check out my other videos for more in-depth analysis and tips. Keep exploring your data and use these tools to make informed decisions.